Amen, amen, amen. Let's allow that song to resonate within your heart. When the Bible speaks, heaven is heard. It's the voice of God from his holy word. When the Bible speaks, people are freed. And when you're free, you're free indeed. Wouldn't you say amen? Ladies and gentlemen, it's such a delight being with you tonight. God has been good to us. And if God is for us, tell me who can be against us. Pleasant Sabbath. Uh, thank God it's the end of the weekend where we can recline in the goodness of God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Won't you say amen? Ladies and gentlemen, we are in for a grand weekend. As I moved around Georgetown, Today, I recognize that several persons have decided for Jesus. And several persons are following us. All right, me somebody. We have a 16-year-old Miss Roberts. You're sharing with all of your friends. And, uh, and, and, and you want the world to know, amen? Uh, God bless you. I saw some good friends who are following. And around the world, I learned that tomorrow, there are some congregations in the United States of America that will be tuning in to be a part of this experience. Let the world word go around that the Bible is continuing to minister to us. Would you say amen? Ladies and gentlemen, I am planning for tomorrow. 
In fact, I want to, I really want to hurry, hurry up and get to tomorrow. Are you with me, somebody? Tomorrow's message is titled, Don't Send Nathan. I'll do as you say. Don't send Nathan. I'll do as you say. Ladies and gentlemen, plan to be here tomorrow. It's going to be grand, great music. And of course, uh, the baptismal fonts are ready around the city uh, and across Guyana on the West Bank on the East Coast. Are you with me, somebody? And we have special transportation. Some persons only know to find this site. So you come here and we have special Special transportation, COVID distance, all measures in place. We are happy to have a chemist on our team who is ensured that things are chlorinized. Are you with me, somebody? We are not playing. We are on God's business. And we are happy that when we are on God's business, we plan well. So, so the, the, the pastors are ready. The fonts are ready. They chlorinize and set. Are you with me, somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is a grand day. I am so excited. Could we let us just get through tonight and come back tomorrow at 9 15, uh, right on to 12 thereabout, where we'll be having a grand time. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's message is titled Time Up. Time Up. And at the end of tonight's message, and during the message, I'll be appealing for more persons. To join the ranks of God. I have, I have a message for Satan. Satan, you lost. You lost. You lost. Jesus is the winner, man. People are still making a decision for Jesus over Satan. Are you with me, somebody? Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow many persons are being baptized. And we, we are recording at all the sites. And we will be putting together a nice video, a celebratory video. Showing the victory of God in your life. Would you say amen? So plan to be here. Um, we are right here at Ernock, at Ernock and Church Street. Uh, and we are ensuring that God's people who request baptism are baptized. So get, join us here. Join us here as we make a decision for Christ. Ladies and gentlemen. Let us bow our heads before we go into tonight's message. Loving Father and God, even as we go to your word, may your Holy Spirit be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. And remember to sign up to click on the link. Pastor Edwards has been, has been promoting well. There are a whole lot of gifts. And trust me, you just ensure you, you invite someone. And listen, we're continuing next week. Did I say that? And so, listen, ladies and gentlemen, the best is yet to come. Don't miss a night next week. Tonight's message is titled, Time Up. Time Up. The choice to serve God is always an urgent one. The choice to serve God is always an urgent one. Because no one knows when Jesus will be putting in his grand appearing. No one knows when Jesus will be putting in his grand appearing. Ladies and gentlemen, in my estimation, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Planet Earth is experiencing a lot of burden and chaos and turmoil. I can tell it's clear to me. It's as clear as day. In fact, I am not sure these may be among the final moments in the proclamation of the gospel. The Bible says that this gospel must be preached to the whole world. You see, back in the day, when I was preaching as at a pathfinder, uh, we preached to a community at a time. Are you with me, somebody? Uh, quite recently, we, we, we pitched bigger tents and we preached to, to cities at a time. Are you listening, somebody? Uh, but more recently, we are happy. Are you with me, somebody? That look at even tonight, that this gospel is spanning the globe. Are you with me, somebody? Heaven is rejoicing. I can, I can almost hear the trumpet sounding. Jesus is about to put in his appearance. 
For this reason, a decision for Christ. Are you with me, somebody? If you're in my rumor, I want you to hear this. A decision for Christ is always urgent. We do not know exactly when, but the times are telling us that Christ is about to come. Uh, that's why in Matthew 24, verse 44, the Bible counsels us. Therefore, be also ready. For in such an hour, Matthew 24 tells us, verse 44. For in such an hour, as he think not, the Son of Man will come. Uh, when they say it's peace and safety. It's sudden destruction. When, uh, when we least expect it. Are you me somebody? I I'm saying the second coming is a grand event. But it will be a surprise to many. The bombing of the em Empire State Building. It was a massive event. It was a major happening. But no one expected it. In like manner, ladies and gentlemen, the lightning will flash from the, the east right onto the west. Uh, 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 this will be a big day. Remember, Jesus in coming in no secret rapture. It's a grand thing. Show time, if you please. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and, and with a voice of an archangel and with a trump of God. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a grand event. But no one knows. When it will happen, no one knows how close we are to earth's last night. No one knows how close we are to the second coming. Our only safety is to be ready 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 12 months a year. Be ready every day. We should learn from the people of Noah's day. Noah preached for 120 years and they did not follow his appeal. Are you with me somebody? I am appealing like Noah. Come into the ark. The rain is coming. Come into the ark of safety. The rain is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, Noah preached for 120 years and people refused to come. Jesus is saying, listen, be ready because just as it was in Noah's time, the same thing will happen in the latter time. Jesus is asking to be ready because he will be pronouncing judgment before he comes. Remember in Noah's time, the door closed. That was judgment. And then the rain came. That is why Jesus is saying, be ready now. Because when he is coming, he would have already closed his judgment books. The deal will be sealed. When he is coming, he is not coming as gentle Jesus. He is not coming as a child in the manger. Listen to me now. He is not coming as a baby boy. He is coming as king of kings and lord of lords. He is coming to reward us. Revelation 22 and verse 11. The Bible says, he that is just, let him be just still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, hallelujah, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. I'm establishing tonight that when Christ is coming, he is coming with his reward. When Jesus comes, he is not coming to plead with people. He is not coming out me somebody. He is not coming to appeal to people. He is not coming to ask questions. By the time he appears, it means that time has expired. Time up, if you please. Justice will prevail. The full wrath of God will be seen. He will be like a consuming fire, said the psalmist. There will be a great earthquake. Ladies and gentlemen, look around you. This world doesn't have a long time left. I'm saying time is about to be expired. Very soon, Jesus will say, time up. I'm coming with my reward. Every man I will reward according to his works. Are you listening to me, somebody? 
Revelation 22 and verse 12. This is what the Bible says. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. To give every man a cordon as his work shall be. Uh, to to, the, to the, the, the person who is on the wrong side of the fence, this looks scary. But this is not a threat. This is a loving promise. Heard me somebody. Jesus is coming with a reward and, and he will reward us according to our works. I have good news for somebody. This world is so unfair. Have you ever been in a position where you work so hard and everybody else got the credit except you? Are you listening to me somebody? You've been grinding and, and grinding and, and at the last moment some Johnny come lucky shows up and gets all the commendations. You've been at the mill. You've been you've been putting in the hours and someone else gets promote are you me somebody uh, you've been working twice as hard and you're only going half as far and someone else is working as half as hard and they're going twice as far this world is unfair you supposed to be head teacher you supposed to be headmaster you should have been promoted to manager you should have gotten the appointment can I preach it like I feel it tonight ladies and gentlemen this world is unfair very often the world refuses to give you what you deserve but I have news for somebody while the world is ignoring you Jesus is looking the world might never say thanks the people you help may turn their back on you but Jesus is saying my friend I am looking and I will reward you according to your works hallelujah Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is saying, if you put it, put in the works, I will reward you. If you get baptized, I got you. Are you with me, somebody? If you didn't do it, come on, talk to me now. God is, is, is a fair God. You see, when Jesus comes with his rewards, oh my. As a boy, I really thought Santa Claus existed. I know, I know you're laughing at me and I am the only boy that thought Santa Claus was real. You, you never had that thought. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and I would, I always try to imagine how he will maneuver into the home. We didn't have a chimney, but he still made it in. We didn't have mistletoe, but we still got gifts. And they know that Christmas season was a time of, of high anticipation. And they said, he knows if you're good or bad. So be good. Hurt me somebody. And even the bad children at Christmas time are looking for gifts. Because people like gifts. Believe it or not. If Jesus should come now. Everybody wants the reward. But I'm saying for some it will be too late. Because when, when he appears. The deal has already been sealed. Time is up. Matthew 25 verse 10 illustrates this. Via this experience of the ten virgins. Where five were wise and five were foolish. Uh, verse 10 of Matthew 25, the Bible says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Time up. You had enough time to get ready. You had enough time to plan. You had enough time to say yes to Jesus. You had enough time to be baptized. You had enough time to give your life to Jesus. You had enough time to make it right. Time up. They were making preparation, but it was too late. Too late. They were out of time. Time up. The time to prepare for Christ 
second coming is now it is evidently clear that time is running out we don't have much longer here on this planet that is that is polluted festering proliferating with sin ladies and gentlemen the time to get ready and stay ready is now are you listening before heaven declares time up jesus is coming ladies and gentlemen i have a big question tonight i have a big question tell somebody it's question time i have a big question tonight if heaven no 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 stay with me if heaven were to announce ladies and gentlemen Tonight at midnight, time will be up. If heaven was to announce, tonight at midnight, time will be up. Well, when it comes to probation, time up comes in two ways. Hold on, hold on. When it comes to probation, time up comes in two ways. A person's time is up when they die. Find me somebody. Because after death is the judgment. We established that already. A person's time is up when Jesus completes judgment and makes his way to planet earth and he says, he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. No, no, no. I want you to, to, to follow me. If God sends Gabriel to make an announcement, hold on, hold on. If God sends Gabriel to make an announcement tonight and everybody can hear across the globe, ladies and gentlemen, an announcement from heaven. Tonight at midnight, heaven will be declaring for all that time is up. If we hear that announcement now, time up tonight at midnight, what do you think will happen next? Hold on. Time up at midnight. What will happen next? If we got that warning from angel Gabriel, what will happen? Let me tell you what will happen. If heaven announces that tonight at midnight, time will be up. It, the, listen, the biggest revival in earth's history will be tonight. Are you listening to me somebody? People will try to cover in one night what should have been covered in years. Ladies and gentlemen, a dying lawyer on his deathbed, I hit me somebody, for years he did not accept Christ and he was dying and, and while on his deathbed he sent for a Bible and he was seen fumbling through the Bible, fumbling through the Bible and someone asked him, what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for a loophole. There must be some way to get in. Now, are you with me, somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I'm saying if tonight was the last night, people will be fumbling through scripture, looking for a loophole. But I have good news for those who are alive and, and you're hearing me. Now is the time to study God's word. Now is the time to read God's word. Now is the time to reflect on God's word. Not when you're dying, not when you're sick, not when you're crippled. Now is the time. Listen, if tonight was the last night, let me tell you what will happen. It will be a big service night. Every Zoom platform will be full. Are you with me, somebody? You see this Bible speaks? Are you with me, somebody? This 2000 and so on will go up to 5 billion. And the other 1 point something billion will be on Zoom somewhere else. Everybody will log in. Everybody will begin to click share. You see all those who are not sharing you looking. Now you're looking. But only now when you hear time up. Then you will start thinking about your son. Who didn't give his life to Jesus. Then you will start thinking about your brother. Uh, who you are afraid to talk to. If you hear that tonight is the final. You will share this link with him. When you had all the time in the world to share it. Listen. I think that YouTube will crash. 
because everybody will log in to any church service every church will be open and packed are you me somebody people won't study covid and all that anymore because they know tonight is the final hour people will log in on the screens people will, are you me somebody every church will will be open and packed and, and and everything will be streaming people will be trying to fool god People will try to fool God. All those in the gambling house. Are you me somebody? All those casinos will close. Ladies and gentlemen. About the time to fall on our knees. The time to make it right. Is not at the last moment. Now is the time. Now is the time my brother. To get it right. Now is the time my sister. To make it right. Galatians 6 and verse 7. The Bible says. God is not mocked. If tonight was the last night on planet. The last night. Everybody will be saying time up. If the, everybody will be trying to fool God. That's why Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The time to make a decision, my friend, is tonight. We want to see you in the baptismal robe tomorrow, making things right with the Lord. Somebody needs to click on the baptism link right now. Are you with me, somebody? Place that link in the chat. Register for baptism. Seek the Lord while he can be found. God took time out to come to this studio. Are you me somebody? To empty this vessel. Fill it back. Are you me somebody? Send his word into the lines. Are you me somebody? Via YouTube and make his way to your home. And now is the time. All you have to do is a click. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason God gives us time is not to go back in sin or to continue in sin, but to repent from sin. Wouldn't you say amen? He is long-suffering, but not forever suffering. Listen, if God announces that there's a time up tonight, I'm saying that the Bible Speaks will have its highest numbers of viewers. But it will be too late. Because on the last night, the doors would have already been closed. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if this was the time up night, lots of preachers, now hear me carefully now. Lots of preachers will stop attacking the Bible. You might be saying preachers attacking the Bible. I'm saying if tonight were the final night, lots of preachers will start, stop attacking the Bible and start preaching from the Bible. Isaiah 20 and verse 8, Isaiah 8 and verse 20, the Bible tells us to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. This is the test of any preacher. Any preacher that stands up to preach must preach from the word. Must declare the word. It should, a preacher must not present tradition. Many preachers, if tonight was the last night on, are you me somebody? If tonight was the, the closing of probation, many preachers will get the guts to stand up for Bible truths. I remember years ago, in fact the year was 2000 and seven i was canvassing in a wonderful island they call it the nature island and while there one sabbath i had the opportunity to wash the foot of someone who for the first time in his life had the boldness to accept god's commandment and god's sabbath he was the bishop of a church that worshipped on the first day of the week. He said to me, he ignored the Sabbath for years. He then went on to say that he knew about the Sabbath. 
But he ignored it since his main source of income came from his church service on Sunday. That's what he said to me. Are you with me, somebody? I, I didn't read this anywhere. I was washing his feet. He was a senior man with, with a seasoned voice. And he said to me, young brother, I knew about the Sabbath for years. But my service on Sunday morning gave me an income. And so for years, when he was asked about the Sabbath, he made an excuse to his members. I'm saying if tonight was the last night, many preachers will be bold enough to go to the Bible, I hear me somebody, and declare what is truth. And I'm saying to somebody tonight, don't even blame the preacher. Blame yourself because the Bible is clear. Ladies and gentlemen, if tonight were the time when heaven says time, time up. If Gabriel announced that tonight at 12, time will be up. Tonight will be a night of heart searching. Are you following me? It will be a night of heart searching. No, no, no. At the last supper, when Jesus declared that he will be betrayed, everyone wanted to ensure that they were not the betrayers. Even the betrayer wanted to ensure. <laughs> Are you with me, somebody? Even Judas. Judas, who had already sold Christ, had the tenacity to ask, Lord, it is, is it I? Ladies and gentlemen, on the last night, nobody wants to be Judas. Even Judas didn't want to be a Judas. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if heaven announces that tonight is the time when time will be up, even the adulterer will ask, Lord, is it I? Yes, it's you. Even the man who is planning to steal tonight will ask, Is it I? Ah, yes, it's you. Ladies and gentlemen, if heaven announces a grand appearing tonight, people will try to fool God. Ladies and gentlemen, if tonight were the last night, like Judas, many will will fake, fake a thing. The same people who are selling Jesus out right now will be looking to, to celebrate his coming. You, you're selling Jesus now. You're selling him for a job. You're selling him for a television show. You're selling him for a grade. Are ah, you with me, somebody? You're selling him for an opportunity. You're selling him because of money. You're selling him because you want a position. You're selling him because you want a particular appointment. You're selling Jesus out now. But on the last night, if heaven announces, listen, if heaven announces that tonight is, the, is when time will be up for man, all the rum shops will close. All the bars will close. All the gambling dens will close. You know why they call it gambling dens? Because people in, in gambling shops and casinos are like, like lions. Greedy lions, I hit me somebody. But, but, but you know, I, as a Guyanese, I probably will call it a crab then. Because nobody in there cares about anybody. Imagine we all going in and gambling against each other for, 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 for your friend's money. I hit me somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying if tonight were the last night, all the casinos will close. All the greedy people gathered in those casinos will run away. I'm suggesting to somebody tonight, that tonight while we have time we should flee evil won't you say amen ladies and gentlemen if tonight were 
if Gabriel announces, ladies and gentlemen around the world, at midnight tonight, time up. Now, if Gabriel does that, Pastor, look at what will happen. All the bad habits will be broken immediately. You know, you have the 12-step plan and the 15-day plan and the 21 days to break a habit plan. All those plans will be compressed and become a one-minute plan. Are you me, somebody? The five-day plan will become a one-minute plan. Ladies and gentlemen, people will begin to clean up. Some people will swipe their phones. Oh, Lord have mercy. If Gabriel announces that, some people have to swipe the phone. Reset, if you please. Hear me, somebody. All the garbage you have on the phone and, and you're saying you're preparing for the Lord. Some people will have to clear chat. Delete text. Remove contact. Are you with me, somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, if, if Gabriel announces that tonight is the last night, you're going to see people fumbling with the phones in their hands. Mercy. All those porn videos. Ladies and gentlemen, if tonight were, 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 it was announced that, listen, this is the final hour. You will see people trying to dress differently. I need me somebody. A whole lot of masquerading will take place. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying that if, if tonight were the last night, a whole lot of people will clean themselves up to bluff God. The time to clean your skin, clean your face, clean yourself is now. If the night were the last night, People will try to bluff God. I'm saying to somebody, God is telling you, listen, you know, people, we know what is right. I'm a human just like you. We know what is right. And when we make decisions against God, our consciences are alive. If you're doing what used to be wrong in your mind and it doesn't feel wrong, pray. Back in the day, they say cockroach eat out your conscience. Help me, somebody. Yeah, and don't, don't, don't do like you don't know about cockroach. I travel. <laughs> I travel around the world. <laughs> I like that. Cockroach is universal. I like that. It's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying tonight. That if, if heaven announces that, that this is the final hour, somebody who was not bold enough to pick up the phone and make a call to put an end to years of struggle will do it tonight. Somebody who refused to speak to someone will dial that person's number tonight. Somebody who's holding grudge for years. Grudge with your own relative people from your own bloodline you're not talking to. How could you say that you, you're, you're, you're coming to Christ? Tonight somebody needs to pick up that phone now. While it's time. Ladies and gentlemen, if tonight were the last night, the commandment problem will be solved. Listen, if Gabriel announces that tonight was the last night, ladies and gentlemen, at 12 midnight, time will be up. The commandment problem will be solved. I mean, somebody, nobody will say the commandment is abolished anymore. People won't have trouble with the Sabbath. Are you listening to me? How do we still have a commandment problem? When James is clear. James 2. James 2. Let's see what verse 10 says. 
James 2, the Bible says, in verse 10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, Christians all over the world, hold to nine commandments, and they reject the Sabbath commandment. And because of the Sabbath commandment, people say that the entire ten they are abolished. Even the one that says, thou shalt not kill. But James says, how, how do we still, are we really reading the Bible? How do we still have a commandment problem? And look at what James says. Let us do some, some reasoning tonight. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, verse 10, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Are you with me, somebody? For he that said, do not commit adultery. Now James is, James is quoting from the Ten Commandments, New Testament. He that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. He that now if thou commit adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor to the law. Are you with me, somebody? No, no. So speak he, and so do, as they shall be judged by the law of liberty. The Bible refers to the Ten Commandments as the law of liberty. Written with the fingers of God. Because the Ten Commandments, it's not a law of bondage. Like the Levitical codes. Of circumcision and all the others. It's, it's different. It's, it's God's character in script. Now if we are to reason, look. He, he is calling the commandment that says thou shall not kill the law of freedom. The law of liberty. Are you with me somebody? And that command says thou shall not kill. And that very command says do not commit adultery. And that very command says honor your mother and your father. Am I speaking truth? And that very command says don't make any other gods or, or bow down to them. That very command says remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Ladies and gentlemen, if tonight Gabriel announces that time is up, no arguments as it relates to God's commandment will be posited. There will be no difficulties asking for Sabbath time off. No amount of money will entice anyone to break the Sabbath anymore. Everybody will remember. Exodus 20 and verse 8, the Bible says, Exodus 20 and verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Everybody will remember John 14 and verse 15, where the Bible says, if he love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring this together. If Gabriel announces tonight, look at this now. If Gabriel announces tonight, Planet Earth, ladies and gentlemen, at midnight tonight, time will be up. If Gabriel announces that, some people have to jump off of the bed that they're on right now. Because all common law relationships will come to an end. Nobody wants Jesus to come them sleeping on a, on a bed of defilement. The Bible says marriage is honorable and the marriage bed is undefiled. All other types of bed. Listen, if Gabriel, somebody has to jump out of that bed right now. Ladies and gentlemen. Somebody who couldn't close shop for years will close shop. Hide me somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, come on, come on, come on. I'm saying tonight that, 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 that adulterous relationships will break. That, that, that fornication will, will stop immediately. If, if, if Gabriel announces, I hit me somebody, that tonight is the final night, all those crick, crooked relationships will come to an end. All those ungodly connections will crack, crumble, and certainly dissolve.
Ladies and gentlemen, on art last night, people will have the strength to marry. Are you with me, somebody? I'm saying we are doing free weddings here. We have a lot of weddings next week. And I am happy that there are intelligent people who are following God's instruction. Would you say amen? Ah, yes. But listen, I am so proud for the individuals who have said yes. I'm going to do what God requires. On earth last night, ladies and gentlemen, some woman will have the guts to tell a man, you can't sleep here tonight. <laughs> oh, Lord. Are you me somebody? He will show up as usual with all the ice cream. Are you me somebody? And the Kentucky, he, he coming as sweet boy I hit me somebody and he show up as usual he, 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 he put on all the cologne I hit me somebody and he's going to the house to the bed of defilement and, and he parks his car and he's, he's coming in as if he's husband and he's not and he raps on the door but if tonight were the last night, you and all your ice cream and, and your chicken and, and your bright money, are you with me somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, some woman will have the courage to say, um, boy, you can't sleep here. Time up! I, I wish that, that tonight some people will say, time up! So that kind of lifestyle, ladies and gentlemen, God requires of you more and there is more to you. Your life could be better. Your family could be better. Life could be enhanced. Be bold enough to make a decision that is right. You can't go wrong when you do what is right. You can't go wrong when you do what is right. You can't go wrong when you do what is right. Some people go wrong and you want to get it right. If you want to get it right, you got to do right. You can't go wrong when you do what is right. I'm saying to somebody, I'm challenging you tonight. God can bring you to that place where, where things line up. The things you didn't expect God can achieve for you. You don't have to wait until probation closes. All Jesus wants is for you to put him first. That is why Matthew 6, 33. Jesus says this with passion. And sometimes we just rehearse it. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and this righteousness and all other things. Listen, when I said all, I mean all. When I said all, I mean all. God is ready to do all for you. More than you can think. More than you can ask. More than you can imagine. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking to somebody out there. God will give you the energy. You started late in life, but God will give you the energy to, 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 to double, are you me, somebody? What you lost, what the conquer worms eaten, what the locusts eaten, God will restore for you. All you gotta do is do right. And when you do right, you can't go wrong. When you do right, you can't go wrong. I'm challenging somebody tonight to make that move for God and God will give you the desires of your heart he will move that crooked boyfriend out the place and give you a real man he will give you a man who doesn't want to be a boyfriend but a man who wants to be known as the husband I'm saying when you do right you can't go wrong when you do right you can't go wrong I'm challenging someone to do right. Earn me somebody. When you do right, God will bless you. I look at my brother Job. I need somebody. He was dumb and the devil was laughing and people were giving up. 
his friends were giving up and they were telling Job something is wrong Job you need to change direction but all Job knew was how to do right are you me somebody and so his friends forgive forgot him but he still did right his wife betrayed him but it's still he still did right his health ran away and left him but he still did right he did right he did right because when you do right you can't go wrong the Bible says that Job got twice as much than he had before and God blessed him are you with me somebody and doubled all that he had when God puts his hand on a man listen you gotta do right and when you do right you can't go wrong when you do right you can't go wrong but you gotta do right listen God really wants you to do what is right he wants you to make the right move my friend in fact let me tell you the truth biologically chemically you are wired to do right hire me some money that is why when you do right you can sleep and when you do wrong all kinds of chemicals keeping you up are you listening to me somebody i'm saying that somebody needs to get some good sleep by simply getting baptized you will sleep better hear me somebody by turning around your life you will sleep better you are wired chemically and biologically to do what is right. I want to appeal to some youngster right now. You're making a mess of your life, boy. Don't allow no marijuana movement to have you smoking. I, I am standing by what I said. Smoking in any form is wrong. It's bad for your health. It's, it's bad for God's body. And I know several persons who threw away a good life chasing the marijuana, the marijuana craze. Are you with me, somebody? I'm saying to you tonight, young man, listen, you weren't built to drink alcohol. You are going contrary to how you were built. Tonight I'm appealing to somebody out there. Don't wait until the last night. Are you with me somebody? If Gabriel says time up. Those who thought the gospel was foolishness. Will come to their senses. Immediately. Those who thought the gospel. Was foolishness. Will come to their senses immediately. Just like in Noah's day, the Bible says in Luke 17, verse 26. And it was written in the days of Noah. So shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. I heard me somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, if tonight were the last night, if Gabriel says time up, all those people who are not baptized, will want to get baptized right now. Tonight I want to appeal to those who have not yet given their lives to Jesus. I want you to know that the Bible is clear on the matter of your baptism. In Acts 16 verse 30, the Bible says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. And to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night. And washed their stripes. Their stripes of sin was washed away. God wants to wash away your guilt. Do you desire a guilt-free life? Do you desire a life that is free of shame and guilt? Don't you want to sleep without fear? 
Don't you want to sleep in peace and in safety? I'm saying to somebody tonight. The Bible is clear. That baptism saves you. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized. The same shall be saved. Tonight God wants to save you from a life of burden. He wants to save you from a life of shame. He wants to save you, my friend. Look at me. He wants to save you from a life of disaster. He wants to bless you for the years you lost. He wants to compensate for the damage that was done. God has big plans for you. All you need to do is give your life to Jesus. He is coming for you, my friend. He is coming. And he said to Nicodemus in John, 5, John 3 and verse 5, Verily I say unto you, except you be born of the water and the spirit, I cannot take you where I want you to be. It is a decision that is made. Are you with me, somebody? This decision for Christ is a decision that is made on an individual basis. Jesus does not save people in crowds. He simply saves people as individuals. We get to heaven as individuals. When he comes on that glorious day, he is coming for individuals. That's why Romans 14 verse 12, final verse for the night. The Bible says, so then, every one of us shall give a account for himself unto God. Ladies and gentlemen, God has a big plan for you. And he is coming for you. Ladies and gentlemen, as I look around our world, this world doesn't have much time. Corona is having a field day. But thank God the king is coming. Families are in the pressure. But thank God the king is coming. Young people are being slaughtered. Listen, this brutality, it has gotten close, too close for comfort. I know that Jesus is coming. Too many mothers are crying out there. I can hear the trumpet sounding. Ladies and gentlemen, the king is coming. Are you listening tonight? I don't trust this world anymore. Don't get too comfortable here. God has a better plan for you where, where cancer will be no more. The marketplace is empty. No more traffic. Sing for Jesus. All the builder tools are silent. Yes. No more time to harvest wheat. I'm saying to somebody tonight. The housewives sees their labors in the court. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't trust this world anymore. Oh, yes. As the key. The king is coming through the gate. Oh, the king is coming. Yes, the king. I can see it. No more cancer. No more blindness. No more dying. No more COVID. No more mask. Is coming. Yes. Praise God. Sing. Come on. Sing for Jesus. Bless somebody. Oh, I love this part. I love this part. Somebody needs to click on the baptismal link right now. Say yes. We're having a big baptism tomorrow. Those who say. Tomorrow is your day to say yes to Jesus. 
the numbers are on the screen the numbers are on the screen my friend yes yes I'm saying to you, my friend, don't wait until it's too late. Jesus wants to put an end to your trouble. He wants to put an end to your misery. He wants to put an end to your disaster. He wants to put an end to your trials. Some family need to come to Jesus tonight. Your entire family. I'm seeing a, I'm saying a family. Where is there a family for Jesus tonight? Is there an entire family for Jesus? Is there a family in Linden? Hold on. Hold on. Is there a family in Linden for Jesus? Is there a family in Barbies for Jesus? You got some family is saying, Satan, we're done with you. We're not living low. We're rolling high. Are you with me, somebody? Is there a family for Jesus? Is there a father looking at me tonight? And you're saying, listen, the devil has gotten enough. I'm going to put this in Jesus' hands. And you're going to see Jesus bring peace over your home. Listen, the devil has had too much in your life. Don't wait until God says, time up. Now is the time to make it right. Are you with me, somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, don't look for a loophole. God is saying to you, my friend, just click on that link. Make a call. Let us know. Several persons have, have said yes to Jesus. Don't wait for next week. Let's see you here tomorrow for baptism. Bring your baptismal candidates down right here. All those folks in the city are you me somebody and we will assign you to to various sites we have transportation in place we have the pastors in place our chemists they have the the chlorinated pools in place are you me somebody things are in place you just have to come hallelujah hold on 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 somebody is saying pastor now listen to this foolish question listen to this foolish question somebody is saying pastor are you going to baptize people during COVID people gambling during COVID people partying during COVID people standing on the street drinking beer during COVID any person that says that baptism shouldn't happen during COVID is of the devil The devil keeping a party during COVID. People gambling during COVID. I mean somebody. People smoking and, and buying cigarettes and, and weakening their immune systems during COVID. And you're telling me that people can't give their life to Jesus during COVID? You heard that foolish question? People going to work during COVID. People working for, for money during COVID. You going to work. Are you me somebody and you can mingle in work, but you can't do the Lord's work? You're going on your job. I'm not saying be foolish. Look at everybody here in masks. Are you me somebody? Are you me somebody? Lies all everywhere. like Lysol every night I'm breathing in Lysol for you sometimes I want to tell them don't spray more so don't ask that foolish question God's work God will save people during COVID because if we do die from COVID it's the same God will resurrect us when he comes. I have news to somebody that God's work, God's work won't stop. God 
God's work will go forward until the end of time. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow we're having a baptism. All COVID restrictions and requirements in place. Pastors in place. Chlorinated pools in place. Individualized rags in place. Mask. Pastor G. I know you're a serious man when it comes to this. Pastor G, come. Come, come. Don't take it off. Don't take it off. I want you to appeal to some. Come, come here, Pastor. You're my boss. I'm working with you and your boss. I want you to appeal to somebody in a mask. Don't take it off. Do God's work under COVID restriction. Are you me, somebody? So invite somebody to Jesus, Pastor. This evening, brothers and sisters, you have heard the word of God loud and clear. The Bible has spoken again. This is your moment to decide because tomorrow is promised to no one. This is all the time you have. And so I want to appeal to that husband. I want to appeal to that wife. I want to appeal to that family. I want to appeal to that youth. Tonight, God is counting on you. He is depending on you. In fact, He is looking at you in your eyes right now and saying to you, How can you deny such great salvation? This is your moment. This is your chance. Who knows whether it is your last. And so I say to you tonight, click on that link. Call that number and make it right with God tonight. Seal your decision. Seal your commitment for life and for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, God's work has to go on. Are you listening to me? God's work has to go on. If I have to smell like sulfur next week, aren't me somebody? God's work has to go on. God's people and God himself is serious about you. If you haven't made it right with the Lord, you have no excuse, my friend. God is inviting you. Tonight, we want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. Click on that link. Click on that link, my friend. Click on that link. Click on that link. Are you with me, somebody? Pastor Chichester, thank you. In fact, some of the brethren from quarantine said they wanted to hear your voice. And I hope that, that those brethren, if there's anybody there, that they would have made that move to Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, we are confident that tomorrow many persons will be giving their lives to, to, to the Lord. And even as we pray, my friend, even as we pray, I invite you. I invite you to come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come. Click on the link. You're the father in the home. And if you move, your entire family will move. You hold him up, your entire family. Some mother needs to make that. Listen, try God. 
try God. Tomorrow I'm inviting you across the city. Come here. We have transportation in place. We will be assigning you. Bring your candidates here tomorrow. If you're in the city. Heard me somebody? And it's environs. Come down. Things are in place to ensure that you are saved. So keep the number on the screen. Call somebody. Click on the link even as we pray. Let us bow our heads. Loving Father and God. Tonight. Heaven has won another victory. Tonight someone's life is better because of Jesus. Tonight some home is better because of Jesus. Tonight some adult, some senior is feeling good. Because Jesus has entered in. Tonight some teenager is celebrating Jesus. Loving Father and God, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. Be with those persons in Linden, on the East Bank, in, on, on, on the West Coast, Lord, in Barbies. May, our, may the numbers ring all night. As soon as someone is convicted, Lord, we are ready to do your work. Dear God, we thank you for the many persons who have said yes to you and, and we ask that, that you show up in a big way tomorrow, God. Honor your word in our lives across Guyana, across the globe. Bless us even now, tonight. I pray for that person who is lingering with the decision that they would linger no more I pray, oh God, that you, that you will increase the discomfort for, for, for that person that is delaying, that, that they will delay no more. Dear God, there's nothing to wait for. And even before I close this prayer, Lord, remind every hearer, every person to be baptized. You can't go wrong when you do what is right. Oh Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Victory we claim. Amen and amen. God bless you, my friend. Now, now don't miss tomorrow. Tomorrow's message is so impact, impacting. It has a long title. Don't send Nathan. I'll do as you say. Don't miss it, my friends. I'm telling you, listen. If you missed every other message, don't miss tomorrow. Don't send Nathan. I'll do as you say. God bless you. Join us tomorrow at 9.15. We have a great program plan. There's the children's feature. The drama continues. We're going to praise God right here. God bless you. See you tomorrow at 9.15. And for those who will be baptized... Don't be here after 11. Be here by 11, the latest. So you could be a part of the service. As we make our way. God bless you, my friends.
Thank you for tuning in to the Bible Speaks Empowerment Series. We know that God blessed you in some significant way. We continue tomorrow night at 7 p.m. You can find the broadcast on number one, the Guiana Conference of Seventh-day Adventist YouTube channel. You can find the broadcast on number two, the Guiana Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Facebook page. You can find the broadcast on the Channel 2 or Safe TV television station. You can find the broadcast on number 4, the Guiana Conference of Seventh-day Adventist website. To get to the website, simply Google Guyana Adventist with a S, A-D-V-E-N-T-I-S-T-S. -S guyanaadventist.org then click the word live on the top left hand corner of the web page remember for prayer requests you can call 615-9902 for prayer requests please call 615-9902 someone will be online to take your call pass the word along Tune in early, listen prayerfully, and let the Bible speak to you. See you tomorrow night. Goodbye, and may God bless you and your family.